Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Game School Online. Welcome to another episode where we take a professional and have them kind of go through their technical breakdowns of a personal project. And uh, every week, every Thursday, you can find us on our twitch.tv forward slash uh, blue underscore champs. Or you can go ahead and go to our youtube.com forward slash blue underscore champs. Or go to Game School Online to kind of get awesome content every week. So uh, joining us this week, and I'm going to pipe him in here. And excuse me, because I'm playing around with my wireless with that mouse, so it's going to take me a while to kind of get to the right screen. One second. Oh, there we go. So can you hear me close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nichols Benz. All right, man. So thanks for joining us. Hi. Uh, this is the part of the uh, show where we let you introduce yourself to the viewers out there, who you are, uh, what you're doing, what you're up to, and what you're going to be kind of covering in this hour. Mm. Yeah, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mickey Benz and uh, I'm a 3D artist, I would say. <laughs> That's what I do most of the time. A game art uh, and recently cinematics and movies. Um, I usually I usually paint textures most of the time, like I'm specializing in uh, painting uh, and painting textures. I'm not really a modeler guy or, or uh, other stuff like that. I just love texturing. Um, uh, yeah, and today I will probably gonna talk about uh, this personal piece here. Uh, which is called Phoenix. Um, it's pretty messy right now, but maybe from our station it looks better. So I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. start switching that screen so that everyone can see what you're uh, you're looking at. Mm -hmm. I came across your image, man, and it really stand out. You're being modest about your modeling, but obviously you, you got to have models to texture on. Um, it really pops out. So you have a very unique style, very painterly. And one of the, the key things I think people notice right away, it looks like a painting. Is this something that you've always been interested in to achieve? Um, basically, I was um, starting out with uh, painting uh, weapons, uh, like World of Warcraft style weapons, mm, like most people do when they start hand painting. That's what really got me interested uh, in like uh, hand painted art at the first place, like World of Warcraft and uh, like importing my models into the game uh, on the live realm. I was hoping not to get banned <laughs> back in back in the early days. And from then on, I just started. Uh, I always worked on something personal uh, next to my uh, daytime job. When I got home, I always painted something or worked on a on a model. Mm -hmm. And eventually I uh, realized that mm, yeah, maybe this shouldn't be just game art. Maybe this game art thing could move on to more into the realm of illustration. And I found a uh, concept art by Corey Loftis. Oh, not Corey Loftis, Corey Smith, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Corey Smith was my bad. <laughs> sure, uh, sure. But I found, uh, buying, find, uh, found this one here. As like I was like, hmm, this could be like totally be um, you know uh, moved over to 3D. Like uh, it's it's uh, perfect for it. So I tried myself out with this one first uh, and aimed to you know get the same look and the same feel. Uh, it's kind of outdated now, but this was the first which was like kind of blurring the line for me between illustration and uh, 3D at least mm -hmm. uh, with my own projects. And then came this one, I believe. And here I really wanted to emphasize those uh, like detailed surfaces that uh, Cedric has. Uh, never could pronounce the second names, uh, so I will never, not even try <laughs> to do that, <laughs> his second name. So yeah, after that, uh, there was this one. And this was the, this was the work where I was was on the on the tram, maybe slightly intoxicated, and I realized that I could use uh, the brass strokes and the cage around around the model to mm -hmm. uh, to blur 
those uh, those anti-aliasing uh, lines of a 3D object, which is, I think, the key when it comes to you know blurring the two worlds together. And this was the first experiment with uh, this technique. And then on, I do you just, uh, do you mind kind of pressing the play button on the sketch 3D so people can believe you? Oh. Because it's so it's so <laughs> at first glance it's like there's no way it's insane, man. And like um, you gotta have to really break it down for us on how you were able to achieve this very painterly look on a 3d object it's um it's it's very uh, unique man do you what kind of do you have like an inspiration aside from you just studying this that other artists that you felt like were getting close to this kind of quality where you were always striving for you're like i, I want to be able to do that uh, not not really uh i was i was always like fascinated with the world of hand painting Mm -hmm. Like uh, Tyson Murphy was an early inspiration. Uh, he painted stuff uh, which which I which I really liked. And there was always an experimental line going on with him, which I really really liked. That he is not stuck in one one world. Mm -hmm. He is trying a comic book or like comics, and he is doing short animated gifs and 3D and 2D, and that was really inspirational. But this uh, like. Uh, blurring the line between 2d and 3d i never really got like con like a concrete inspiration for this from anyone it was just uh, that i i tried to you know give myself a challenge and see uh, where i can how far i can take this you know mm -hmm. is this um, um made up of mostly defuse or are you using the whole normal map and specular like no it's no it's only it's only diffuse map it's just flat and diffuse. It's a uh, diffuse all, always. And is, is uh, do you paint in the lighting? No, right? You you actually have light. In yeah, there. yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I paint in the lighting. This is the based oh, wow. on Sam Spratt's il illustration. So I had like a reference image and then painted it. Uh, this is the render of the steel render of the the three D, and uh, this is the the three D model. Uh, the way I go about it is basically about it is using a lot of transparency. Mm -hmm. Like as you can see here, there is a drip coming mm -hmm. down from the glass here, and that's like just an alpha mask of a brass stroke, mm -hmm. which comes down here. Uh, and uh, I combine it with uh, basically just the wireframe. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, the frame of the thing. Let me show you here. So I don't know if you can see it, but there is the con uh, there is a solid model here beneath, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I have the model duplicated and pushed with like this amount, like you know you know just a f uh, few millimeters. It's pushed mm -hmm. outside, and that model has uh, the same texture uh, as the one above it, mm -hmm. and so this one, uh, the cage and the model has the same texture, but mm -hmm. the cage has a uh, has a transparency applied so that way it uh, you know breaks up here and there mm -hmm. so it's not 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 a constant outline like uh, the one below it oh, can I... yeah so yeah i think that's that's basically the key as you can see here it's doing getting those slight bumps into the mm -hmm. silhouette of the model right and that's the that's uh, from far far away it kind of because of the anti-aliasing and stuff like that, it blurs it together and it becomes kind of painterly from mm -hmm. a few angles. So yeah, uh, yeah, and the glass is pretty complicated. There's like inside and outside alphas everywhere. So mm -hmm. not gonna try and. Uh, but you know, I uh, use a lot of back facing. Like uh, here, at the inside where you see this light. This is a. This is a model that is. Um, flipped inside so if you f see it from from this angle if you, uh, let me show so this is the model from the upside if you see it from this angle it's going to be see-through but on the other side it's not see-through mm -hmm. so as we go around we, we only see the inside of this uh, you know this sphere or this sphere like thing and that is called the uh, back face culling in 3d art so in 3D, like the planes are not two-sided by default. You can only see one side of the plane, and if you go around it, uh, you cannot see it. So 
uh, that's basically what I use to my advantage here. Mm -hmm. Just flip uh, a lot of the things outside, and that way it uh, it kind of looks like a painting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think I think you uh, invented a new style here. <laughs> I, I'm I'm like really serious about I I can't think of anybody who have done this type of look with 3D. Of course, we have stylized. And when you think stylized, you think Blizzard, you think Riot, you think those type of games that mm -hmm. have been done and and maybe altered here and there to kind of have a distinct difference between like a League of Legends or something from Heroes of the Storm, right? There's a distinctness mm -hmm. to it, but yeah. nothing to this effect. Like you're not, you're gonna have to start coining this style <laughs> <laughs> after yourself. For uh, because I think a lot of people are being very inspired with this and will try to incorporate it into their game or yeah, project. I hope, I, I hope so. Uh, I've I've been to, I I was uh, I visited Berlin not too long ago, a game company there, and they were basically just in, uh, interested in how I did this and what was the method, mm -hmm. and I give them a talk or something about it. So I think it's. Um, the way I learned 3D was through the internet. Uh, there were no really too many tutorials or in Hungarian when I started out. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 12, it was like 3ds Max 6. It's mm -hmm. a long time ago. And I learned from the internet. Uh, and there were a lot of people who shared their like processes and you know made tutorials for free. And without those people, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. So I, I I kind of feel like um, it's the I can I must make the path that I I uh, took available for the upcoming generation as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always um, do my processes and workflows always see through. Uh, so I always tell everybody how I did it exactly. There is always uh, process images, and for this I even did like a detailed making of article so if anyone is interested in uh how it was uh, you know uh made uh, it's all here step by step so yeah I'm, i think i hope that uh, a lot of people will get inspired and make uh, many many uh <laughs> many cool projects with uh, this technique and maybe add their own twist to it it's just an idea i think it's uh it's always good to evolve these things. So I hope people will join the fun. It's pretty good to do these things. I, I really enjoy them. It's very charitable of you. We just had uh, recently a guest last week, Igor, that had a similar story because he grew up uh, in, in is located in Croatia and very mm -hmm. much the same. The game development scene over there is very new. And so there's not really schools or access to or people that really know about the game industry that much so yeah, like yeah. you he, he had to learn things on his own and then are self-taught and what i've noticed mm -hmm. about you guys over there are very driven focus and discipline and uh, purely uh, passionate about the industry and uh, have gone very far uh, because of those reasons i think um, we talked a bit last week and I kind of want to probe your mind a bit about the subject, how uh, I, I live in the United States. We have a lot of access here. We have schools here as well. And the game development scene is at least um, more developed and people have uh, the ability to go to school to learn about these things. But I also find that in these schools, there are, I'm sure in your country too, just lazy students uh, where even with all the access, they don't push as far as they can um, just mm -hmm. basically they have other types of distractions and and to eat their time how do you feel about that general subject like are, are people in mm -hmm. Hungary very usually very driven just based on circumstances and within at least art mm -hmm. that is not very um, not very popular right hmm, I'm not sure if it's a, it's a region thing I'm not entirely sure about that, but there is definitely a distinction between uh, personalities and how someone uh, approaches learning. 
Um, so for me, it was always experimental. I'm too too dumb <laughs> to learn from other people's mistake. Mm-hmm. So I need to go there and you know bump my head against the wall a hundred times until mm-hmm. I find the find the door in the in the dark which was already pointed out by a hundred people that you should go that way. But I was like, no, fuck you guys. I'm trying, I'm doing it on my own. I'm <laughs> yeah. just going to bump my heads into the wall. Yeah. And after that, I find the door. But it's like, um, for me, it's like a training that even when I have no guidance uh, later on, I will still be able to find the door <laughs> mm-hmm. on my own if it makes, it makes any sense. So I was always, uh, uh, I was always trying to, you know, uh, yeah, do things on my own and discover, discover all these things uh, uh, and find a new fascination for me to keep me interested because I get bored really easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if I accept work and I start working on something that I'm not really interested in, I can kind of tend to, you know, slack off. So I need to get my get myself uh, inspired again. Uh, but there are definitely some people who who are like uh, living the illusion of uh, buying uh, knowledge. Um, I think mm, to a degree you can understand from from other people's mistakes on how you can uh, how you can do this, how you can do that. Like you can increase your uh, like like your learning curve by twenty percent or something like that. I'm not sure about the concrete number, but uh, uh some people are just like you know constantly buying new 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 tutorials new brush packs and everything uh, hoping that it will uh you know give a shortcut but i believe uh, that you cannot you cannot skip the mileage you, you must uh, get in get in the work and whether if if you do it through school like in a university for 3d art or 2d uh that is cool also uh, i mean cool uh, people are, people can be motivated there as well. So I think it depends mostly on personality and how much of a gap somebody try somebody tries to fill in their own life. Mm-hmm. Like I think um, most people uh, who will, who become like really really great, like the great singers and and you know the comedians and you know stuff like that, always have like some kind of uh, like lack of lack of something lacks in their lives, mm-hmm. and by pursuing something uh, fiercely and very intensely, uh, the feedback loop, like like getting the followers or getting the getting the recognition and the fame or money, whichever they like, mm-hmm. will come back to them, and that way that gap will slowly be, you know, filled up a little bit, but without hunger. Uh, you cannot uh, achieve greatness, I feel like. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, maybe hunger is not, not I mean, literally uh, hunger <laughs> is mm-hmm. the, not the right word. It's just a metaphor for it. So yeah, I, I think I, I, I think you're, you're totally correct on that. I, I completely agree. Like um, going back to kind of what you're saying, I, I learn exactly the same way that you do. There are, I'm, I'm myself, very dumb (laughs) i think there are people out there that can get instructions hear it and then be able to process it and able to execute i am not one of those people it takes me a thousand times to make mistakes to finally master it and i'm usually when any skill not just with art i'm usually Mm -hmm. the first one to be last like i'm just the worst when it comes to things Yeah, yeah, yeah uh but it also i think to our advantage teaches us hard work and that Mm -hmm. to achieve anything that we have to put in the time and dedication to get to that level that we feel that can be competitive. Right. And, um, it's also a tool. mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, that you can use. It's also a tool that you can use. Like if you can learn something on your own, then whether it's, if you can move to programming or jujitsu, whatever you can Mm -hmm. pick it up um because you already know how to be dumb and how to mm-hmm. experience and, and uh, get the knowledge from the experience not from to from tutors and i think at at some point uh, if somebody keeps evolving at some point they will they will leave uh, 
achieve a stage or get to a stage in their uh, like in art or illustration or or whatever uh, discipline it may be where you have uh, no one nobody in front of you there are no footsteps to follow mm -hmm. there are no more uh, no more instructions that you can download from the internet mm -hmm. and that's where where uh, in like but that's where the innovation and the learning things on your own i think becomes uh, really really handy mm -hmm. because essentially up to that point you were basically on your own <laughs> because uh, you didn't really uh, listen to no one else just doing the thing you wanted to do and uh, getting the stuff from it and when you reach the point that that uh, the, the no man's land mm -hmm. then you can still apply the same rules that you learned and discover new things just by trying and bumping your head into different stuff mm -hmm. and that's not uh, you know bashing on schools or anything it's just my way of doing it mm -hmm. uh, yeah but uh, are you are you still uh, uh, i mean you're a 3d artist as well or you're mm -hmm. uh so uh, a little background on the listeners i'm gonna bore them a bit because they kind of know who i am so i've been in the industry for a while now um over 12 years as a environment mm -hmm. artist but i've been moving nice. to more like a business management kind of role um in recent years mm -hmm. so i've been around uh, i've been through triple a i've been through mobile i you know i'm i'm testing mm -hmm. indie right now so when i look at artists such as yourself and like guests like last week or the week before who are mostly self-driven and don't have like the access of what los angeles studios are but are still making a name for yourself uh i get jealous not just jealous but like i, I in admiration because i feel like that is um that is the future for all artists to be able to uh, survive and market themselves um, because uh, I, I kind of shared yeah, this agree. yeah last last week and in many episodes before where uh, I think triple a guys especially guys who work on big games uh, mm -hmm. there's we're, we're so shepherd like we're so safe in like those big companies that uh, when mm -hmm. we get home we're not very driven to uh to work on new stuff personal stuff and learn mm -hmm. new techniques and really push the boundaries because we mm -hmm. often feel i think at least for me on a personal level, i felt like oh i made it you know i'm working on the biggest game this year uh yeah, i can yeah. go home and, and enjoy life right i will do other things mm -hmm. but uh like the game industry as you know like the tools and 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 techniques and a technology just evolves so fast that if you just sleep on that, you will be behind the curve very fast. And yeah, yeah. Um, and that I, I think um, now that I'm kind of more uh, in the indie development uh, minefield, because it is scary mm -hmm. <laughs> working on stuff yourself, right? Um, yeah. I, I feel like those artists and and designers and developers are are better uh overall mm -hmm. i i just think uh, generally uh, everyone just has multiple tool sets and mm -hmm. uh they're more used to working for themselves marketing themselves uh i think mm -hmm. opportunities just open up for them more <laughs> and it's an easier transition yeah. so like when I'm looking at your stuff, level. yeah, it's very innovative, man. Like you, your inspiration is not exactly looking at like last. I mean, these are great games, right? Last of God of War. It's like oh, I want to do something like that. No, your inspiration is mm -hmm. outside of the industry, and it's like, hey, I I've always liked this painterly style. I want to mm -hmm. see if I can change that within uh, using this different medium, which is 3D and, and games related, right? Um, and I, I feel like you're, you're really are in a no man's land of innovation. Um, mm. and you're, you're continu continuously like really, uh, perfecting this particular style. You need to start, you need to start coding a term for this style, man. The Mickey, Mickey, <laughs> style, <laughs> Mickey style or something, because it's very unique. Yeah, I haven't you. seen. Thank you. Yeah, when I was browsing through our station, this, you know, that collage of like a thousand artists, right? That like hurts yeah. your feelings when you look at it. Yours like popped out immediately because it was so different. 
Uh, I couldn't Thank believe you, how it was uh, 3D, man. It was <laughs> this guy's lying, but I love how you have evidence. Uh, it was yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Definitely. Yeah, um, for me, it's like uh, kind of sad to see sometimes uh, when I uh, <clears throat> one of my one of my earliest workplaces where I got to. Uh, I was like working a lot when I was a teenager. Like uh, there was at least stupid dreams. Like you know, I'm gonna get to the biggest studio in Hungary. I'm gonna be this. I'm gonna be that. I have my own computer, and there will be a, 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 a like a receptionist and shit like that. These were the things that I had. These were the <laughs> these were the things that I wanted to achieve. It's so so mm -hmm. silly uh, mm -hmm. looking back at it now. And after a while, I achieved it, and I was looking at the window and. I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? It's so <laughs> depressing. Yes. Like, I realized that I've been chasing something that is basically empty of uh, deep values or meaning or whatever. It was just a yes. soulless money making machine. And mm -hmm. people around me just basically lost their passion for, for what they were once excited about. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of like, not, not burning stars around the studio and they were like really depressed and they were just doing one model after the other and it was like what the fuck is this i need mm -hmm. to get out of here mm -hmm. and uh for me uh there were just sometimes i like once or one or two people in each studio that i've been i meet somebody who is like see the spark in their eyes and they are telling me that oh, they are working on a project at home and this and they published it and they did, do, did this and did that and those are the people who who you know after five or six years you hear about them oh he's in california and now he's doing this or he made a company and mm -hmm. stuff like that so for me it's like kind of a double-edged thing because in on one one hand i kind of feel uh, feel really bad for for people who are either unable to leave these unsatisfactory uh, soulless grinding machines mm -hmm. or they are just not recognizing that what they are doing is basically killing their soul or their inner fire mm -hmm. to use big terms here <laughs> but no, yeah it's uh it's exactly what, dude what you're saying is exactly how i felt um mm -hmm. You know, you, like uh, just work on these uh, games. You know, in this um, money-making machine, like you put it, feels very safe, right? You're like, I've made it, I'm here. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, it was an odd feeling of shipping a game that you worked so much on, and I didn't want to play yeah. it. Like I wasn't excited yeah, when it was yeah. out. It's a good game. I wasn't ashamed of it, and it was a good team. <laughs> but it didn't feel mine. It didn't feel like mm -hmm. I um had a huge part in it and um and uh it wasn't until recently now that i am full-time doing my own thing that i finally am making time to play games again the original reason why i went into game history right it's just that the yeah, later yeah. years i just concentrated on the art or when i come home i concentrated on other life things but the main reason mm -hmm. i been got in this she was playing games and i was you know like many artists and designers grew up playing games all the time right yeah, and yeah. that's what inspired us but <laughs> later in my life i just completely lost sight of it now i have to schedule time yeah. to play games to make sure it's like man let's find the love yeah, yeah. again and uh yeah, exactly. and now finding artists such as yourself and going through and paying more attention about the craft more so than mm -hmm. the end product i i really feel different i really feel fulfilled when i complete something on my own now and it's uh, i don't know how to describe yeah. it. i think every artist kind of go through that journey where um you know the responsible uh, self hopefully. yeah well the responsible self always tells us like well this is what you love so make money make money so you can keep doing it all mm -hmm. right i made money but i forgot why i'm i'm doing this uh or i'm just doing it just to make money now not doing it and then I get money on the side, right? It's um... yeah, it's like um, a little problematic for me in the and in the educational side. Mm -hmm. Like we ignore philosophy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> completely. Basically, mm -hmm. I feel like there is not not many the like where I grew up in the school. There was always like the goal is to get a job. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But there were no talk about 
does this job fulfill you? Does Life this job make yeah. the world a world mm -hmm. better place or your environment or there or, or does this will, will it feed you with uh, with a deeper meaning yes of course money is like an essential thing to to have and yeah it's uh, it's it's needed but at, at the same time i think it's pretty overrated uh somehow mm -hmm. and there is not much talk about the other like values uh, which you like which you mentioned now that con getting connected to what fulfills you mm -hmm. is like totally a secondary thing uh, in schools, in most schools. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like, uh, and if you have money, then maybe you can get uh, get to that point. But mm -hmm. I think it leads to a lot of like health issues, like mental health issues. And mm -hmm. generally, just, you will have money, of course. That's that's fine. You will have things. You will have things to show your friends. But inside, you will just uh, rot away. And I don't think it's right. Uh, it's a good uh, good route to take yeah a lot of artists don't come back from that that's the thing like get so lost in it they're so secure they're so afraid of taking risks it's very hard to be like you know i'm just gonna pursue my passion again which is yeah. an ex expression of of life right which is what art is and uh yeah. in in the business of art it, you know the you the, you can have some of that sure you can still express some art <laughs> or some life into yeah. art but it's mostly about making money right um yeah, yeah it's, it's just like, uh, go ahead yeah, go ahead yeah okay so the I've, what i feel like sometimes is that uh, like illustration and lot of lot of work on art station and a lot of work that we as uh, an art we, are, we as artists do like game art and stuff like that is basically a wrap like candy wrap, beautiful mm -hmm. candy wrap. Mm -hmm. So maybe I have this glass of bottle here, and I and somebody wants to sell this bottle, and they will come to me that dress this up, dress this bottle up in such a way that people will buy it. And uh, sometimes that's what I feel like that maybe we have this game, we have this this music, or we have this this movie, and make it beautiful so people will buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where I think responsibility comes in a little bit that dress up stuff that you think has value in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this this is what I try to, you know, uh, get myself to do because I was, you know, <laughs> through the school and not paying too much attention to uh, like philosophy and stuff like that. I, I was always like pursuing that dress up somebody else's stuff, get paid and be happy. Right. But I think there is another approach where you can maybe figure out what you want to sell and dress it up uh, with your skill set. Uh, and that's a, that's a completely different mindset, as you said, with the indie game dev or, or with, the, with the management uh, stuff you said, like moving away from AAA and figuring out your own way. And you may be using your, your uh, drawing or art to, to dress up that thing that you feel like will, you know, inspire others uh, or will make this world a little bit better and put that into a beautiful candy uh, wrap and sell mm -hmm. that to uh, to the people. Not sure if this made any sense. <laughs> no, it totally makes sense. Because I think, like you said, um, with bigger teams and bigger companies that are primarily set up to make money, right? It's kind of hard to... Yeah kind of just make it for the sake of art right uh to mm -hmm. to yeah, yeah. to a uh, degree right when it comes to uh, i i agree for the sake of art with a deadline is always the best mindset because mm -hmm. artists can take forever if they really wanted to and that's bad <laughs> it never it ne it'll never get done right but i think mm -hmm. uh because of smaller teams that are mostly driven by passion of getting it finished yeah. more so than profit because it's a crapshoot for smaller teams yeah. right and people resonate with it mm -hmm. really 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 well that's why i like it yeah exactly game, yeah. Mm -hmm. you can feel the genuine intention behind it that this is a game that these fucking people love to play and they love yeah. to make it and there were mm -hmm. like four or five people and they make a, a shit ton of money and mm -hmm. that was not the goal but that that's what what it leads to what it um, happened yeah. sometimes 
yeah so yeah it's interesting or interesting yeah well let's go over this piece that you have up sire that was a bit of a tangent but that kind of touched touched a chord on me because i recognize that in you as well it's like i feel like every artist goes Mm -hmm. through a journey such as that where especially when they see success is like i'm always interested in what paths they take from there um Mm -hmm. because it's the quintessential question like how passionate or you know at some point do you lose it you know yeah and what's the next step there is always a next step and Mm -hmm. after you have this and that and there is going to be (laughs) the next one (laughs) yep yep so i want to quickly show you the the paintings here Mm -hmm. because that's how it started uh i wanted to make uh i wanted to move away from other people's concept for Mm -hmm. a really really long time i was always scared to make the leap (laughs) <laughs> to to just do my own stuff and then i started like uh, uh, almost exactly one year ago like three or four days <laughs> mm-hmm. in one year ago i started painting uh, again in 2d starting with this bearded dude mm-hmm. and then made decided to p- uh, paint 10 uh paintings here mm-hmm. uh, and i decided later on that i will make them in 3d mm-hmm. So that's how this one came to be. That was the third painting. And I was like, hmm, let's do a music video. I always wanted to do a music video and I had no <laughs> music videos at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that was the goal of this project, to make a music video. Uh, and I picked this uh, portrait and then moved, moved on to uh, 3D. Uh, and basically, should I maybe? Yeah, basically, I had a base mesh for this face here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, I made a base mesh for an earlier project of mine, mm-hmm. and uh, I moved it in ZBrush uh, to match the concept I have here mm-hmm. uh, or on Instagram. Just move it in ZBrush. It was like <laughs> two hours or something. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't take too long. And then I have a, I have a tutorial here. I'm gonna turn down the volume, which shows that how I projected the, the face onto the model. Not sure why it doesn't load, but anyway, uh, if people are interested uh, here, uh, they can check it. The the projection workflow mm-hmm. part of it. So yeah, in 3D code you can project uh, the any any kind of 2D image onto onto a 3D model. So that's mm-hmm. what I did. Uh, oops, <laughs> is this this one? Yeah. So yeah, I projected it onto the face basically from the front view and finished it uh, to the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. That was the first step. Uh, I was really comfortable by that time with the, you know like making a 3D head and uh, painting on top of it. And then uh, came this. Uh... So for so the basic idea was it, <laughs> it will be not to be visible here, but I wanted to make a double exposure image. Mm-hmm. So from the front view, I wanted to make it look like that the tower is the eye of the girl mm-hmm. and that these the other nose of the girl uh, but it completely fails, so it's like nobody sees it. Uh, and this, <laughs> this corn. I see it. I like see it. Yeah, deep, yeah. <laughs> deep corn. Yeah, and uh, like the nose here should be this, but it's a uh, it's a uh, half half uh, successful attempt. But there will mm-hmm. be most likely another one which will uh, <laughs> fulfill this a bit more. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was the goal with this project to make a music video and kind of make the eye here or, or from the front it should look at first glance that oh that that's a, that's a part of her face but it's kind of not sure how well that that went on anyway uh so yeah that was the first phase basically just getting the face uh done and then i moved on to to the inside of the head and i i recorded a lot of oh i have the like the process here mm-hmm. so this is how it started <laughs> and then just build it up uh, from here, uh, I I wasn't sure 
how I wanted to what I wanted to paint. I was just thinking about the colors. I always start with the colors, mm-hmm. and then obviously it looks shit, but then it you know turns more into a painterly thing, and the colors change a little bit, and the structure change changes up a little bit. So this was the process of the the painting, and then for the inside for the scene, I recorded. This is three minutes, so I can talk over it, I think. I made the model first, uh, a rough block out, as you can see here. This is shot out from, it's a render from 3ds Max. Mm -hmm. I made the block out here for the inside scene for the head. And then painted uh, on top of it in uh, Photoshop. Because, and I saved the camera view also. So uh, the goal was to, make the 3D block out and then paint on top and just use the projection. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to work twice, you know, make a concept and then do 3D and then redraw the whole concept. Mm -hmm. I I could just, uh, you know, make the 3D and project it on top. So that's what I did here. Mm -hmm. Um, And this way I made sure that it will match my model. Uh, It will match the block out. So I painted the inside scene or at least uh, you know a, uh, a rough sketch of it here and projected it um and after i had this uh, like the inside scene i realized uh, i'm not sure if my uh, if uh, if i play a song on my computer will it go through to you or is it just my microphone right let me see here uh just keep talking let me try to set it up on my side i believe i can get it to work though Give me a second. Mm-hmm. okay not not sure how to so anyway i found the uh, music a pretty goofy music for it and i uh tried to and i was about to make the music video and i realized that i don't have <laughs> don't have too much to show inside the head um <clears throat> So I decided to fill it up with more uh, objects. Like uh, there eventually I made a slot and a shark, which were which which are inside the uh, inside the girl's head also, just so I have more um, focus points that I can uh, show in the music video. Because at first it was really really boring. Uh, or there were not many things that I could show in the music video, so mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I wanted to make it a bit interesting. And also with this project, uh, which was new for me, that it was really, really, really personal for me. Uh, like uh, uh, just uh, you know, dealing with my own personal life in 3D. Basically, it was art, art therapy for me. So uh, not sure how apparent the story is for for the viewers, but uh, basically what I try to do here is, you know, um, rephrase my own feelings uh, with with uh, with vertexes. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was a that was a goal here, mm-hmm. uh, and that that really kept me going. I think it's really, really important uh, to pick pick uh, personal, uh, very personal pieces, because sometimes uh, when the motivation or inspiration runs out for the people I mentioned, like in in the workplace that that uh, don't really work on uh, their own stuff, is sometimes the reason is that they don't. Maybe they will go to an uh, art station uh, and yeah, uh, look all oh, that stuff. Is, this is this is a pretty lady. I'm going to do this pretty lady, mm-hmm. but there is no like personal connection with it. But if yep. you, you know, your your dog died, and then you want to make a tribute for the dog, you will you will be, you will be motivated, inspired, and more focused throughout the whole project. It will have more meaning and more value in the end. Uh, so for me, this is uh, something that that's another new thing for me. To really use this tool as a as a self self expression, you know, and mm-hmm. some some or not self expression, maybe just helping my own self deal with stuff, and then hopefully 
some people will look at it and they will be uh, they will uh, deal with their own stuff a bit easier you know <laughs> well your <laughs> says <laughs> yeah your art style is very unique right and uh it's very mm -hmm. personal and your story i think i figured out a way that i can play your music video but i have to mute you mm -hmm. so if you want to go mm -hmm. ahead and um start playing it i can uh get that mm -hmm. going and as soon as you're ready to come back uh ah, I'll okay. pipe you back so in. we can start yeah So we're almost about the hour mark, and uh, mm -hmm. Mickey, it's been fantastic talking to you. You're inspiring me. I hope you are planning to make a game with this art style. I like seriously. I want to see it <laughs> one yeah, day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, this is yeah. uh, the part of the show <laughs> that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch to you. Give me a second. My mouse is like asleep. Uh, that I'm going to let you uh, shout out, give attention to, or tell people where to go and uh, promote yourself in any way that you want. Uh, so go for it. Oh, so it's, ah, right. Uh, well, I think I pretty much showed everything uh, here. Uh, it's my art station if you want to have a look at the other projects. Uh, also, I have uh, here with this project, uh, I made a five hour long tutorial. Uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's freely available for everyone. So here through, uh, through my art station, you can find this is the, I think it's the texturing. There is two hours with a commentary. I go over how to paint te uh, textures and how I go about uh, game art in general. So if you're interested in that, there is like five hours of that on YouTube and the projection, which I already mentioned. And there is like weapon texturing tutorials and these are all for free. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this is the art station and this is my Instagram for those who want to see kind of freaky, psychedelic uh, uh, art. I, I don't know. So these are the these are the 2D art which I paint most of the time and some of this will eventually turn into 3D. So if you want to uh, be up to date with what I'm working on, then probably Instagram is the best. And on ArtStation, I only post the works that I invested a lot of time in. So yeah all right that's it well thank you so much mickey uh it's been mm -hmm. fantastic having you on this show man i am i'm blessed to kind of sit here with you and talk about these things we kind of went back and forth with philosophy i think we're pretty much on the same page lazy people are lazy yeah. motivated <laughs> people are motivated but uh yeah, yeah. would love to have to you know have you back on on your next project man we, we do this every time anytime you have a personal project feel free to reach out but uh that's it for the show everybody please follow yep. mickey on instagram thanks on for our station yeah of course dude it's been uh 
a huge pleasure. I, I, everyone's kind of like, it's an instant head turner, man, looking at your work. Uh, it, so to be able to say you go to the art station uh, front page and among a thousand, yours clearly stood out, which is exactly what happened with me. Uh, it's a huge, <laughs> it's a much. huge, huge thing to say. So uh, congratulations on that. So uh, that is pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I will follow up with you guys. We're here every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. This is a special time, so thank you for anyone that was able to join us earlier than usual. Uh, if you catch this, uh, you're probably watching us on youtube.com forward slash game school online. And thank you, everybody, and see you guys next week.